Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kudash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule wealth and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom meaning peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. So I want to do a flow in the spirit. I'm in transit. You can now read where I'm able to. I've started off, I picked Proverbs 19, just on a random thing. I didn't want to do anything topic specific necessarily. Or, you know, in the news, but just rather flow in the spirit to see where we go with it. So this is Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Okay? But the scriptures of you I mean also, not necessarily obviously, it's obvious to us that know it, but also speak about when a rich man speak, you know, every man holds his tongue. A great example of that is Andrew Tate. You know, he's got however many millions and he's saying some basic, basic shit that the apostles have been pushing for years upon years. You know, but because they're not coming in Bugattis and this and that, a lot of people are not going to be receptive to it. Okay, because they want they want to chase money, which is nothing wrong with getting money. But when you idolize it, you know, make it your priority above the Lord, that's absolutely a great, great issue. Because that's idolatry, which is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Right? The scriptures also say that the love of money is the root of all evil. Because people put that onto a pedestal, right? Into, into a pedestal, therefore they idolize it. You know, they put it first. It talks in the scriptures, money is a defense. Money answers all things, but you have to put it in a, in a way in balance. You know, riches profit not in the day of destruction, in the day of wrath. You know, paraphrasing that scripture there. Okay? And this, this society seems to be, you know, void of integrity. You know, it seems to be a thing of the past. A lot of the, the Eastern nations, you know, Eastern European nations even, are, are big on that. You know, they might, um, they might eat pepperoni all the time. You know, and that, that's not a big thing to them. But integrity, you know, is one of their their uh, ancient values, if you like. You know, a man's word holding weight. This is what these nations still hold today, hold to today. You know, so it's just, it's a it is a scriptural concept, but again, certain other ones have been they are absolutely abolished. It seems Eastern European nations that are Christian countries. You know, they they still don't keep the law. You know, because Christianity, as it's been taught, is off. You now, of course, the true Christian, the true worshipper of the one that's named Christos in the Greek, which in the Hebrew would be Hamashiach, Hamashiach, sorry, okay, with the meaning anointed or rubbed, right? That being Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, he gave the, he is the law, you know, he is the word made flesh, and it's written in there. For example, to avoid, abstain from pork, you know, abstain from seafood. So these nations don't keep it, but, you know, a lot of these Eastern nations, Elamites, you know, their word is everything. And I don't mean every single one. It seems to degrade as generations, you know, stay here longer. And I mean England specifically, or, or in Western culture, you know. You love a lot of the, the younger ones, they don't care about, about anything, they don't care even about their religion. You know, which is, Islam is not the truth, but there's a lot of principles, you know, that are biblical, biblically sound, you know, and it's a hell of a lot more righteous than whatever E pushes, you know, ultimately it's still idolatry, but if you were to weigh in the balance, the customs, you know, and the, the laws, for example, they don't eat pork, you know, that's a law in the scripture, not to give credit to Islam because they got it from, you know, the Holy Bible, but still. So better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. You know, but nowadays it's all about saying the most controversial thing, you know, the most blasphemous thing, the most, what's gonna get the most clicks, the most views, you know? And I mean that on the left-hand side. Obviously you can use it in the truth. You know, you can try to draw someone in. <laughs> I remember putting up a video, which I didn't intend to get views, but once I started getting views, I understood. You know, of course, uh, yeah, looking in hindsight, that yeah, that's gonna get views, of course. I had a video called um, Will There Be Sex in the Kingdom? You know, and it's sex sells. <laughs> That's a proverb of the world, you know, but sex sells, a controversy sells, you know? But not every, it can be foolish, 
it can be perverse, you know, but people will enjoy it, you know, because it's exciting unto them. Right, it's Proverbs 19 and 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good, and he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. You know, and him making haste. You can make haste in, in a good way. For example, it talks in Psalms, I think it's Psalm 119, where it says that I made, I made haste and tarried not to keep thy commandments. Of course, that's a good thing. You know, if you're making haste with your feet to um, to keep the commandments, how could that be bad? But if you're making haste in the time of trouble, you know, you're running to all these other idols, you're running to another philosophy, you know, you're asking counsel of sinners on biblical matters, you know, matters that can be sold through scriptures, you know, you're going to other, other, you know, places for it. There's certain things, oh shit. There's certain things, sorry, the recording cut off. If you want to learn about how to create a rocket, you know, the scriptures is not going to tell you that. You know, but if you want to learn some... Everything is applicable. You know, someone that isn't in the scriptures and applying them, making rockets, is going to make a shitter rocket, generally, than someone that is. You know, if you were to take the exact same person, because the scripture will teach you, you know, more discipline more again integrity and that's always gonna would be a, a thing to uh, forward your business you know so these, these scriptures are not just we read them you know at camp then we go about our business and don't make reference to them you have to apply these at work for example not every single one I'm not saying wear fringes at work you know you have to use wisdom but for example your boss starts getting on you and you think man fuck this heathen man I'm gonna, I'm gonna cuss him out, I'm gonna tell him about himself. You know, and then you'll end up losing your job. You know, what do the scriptures say, for example, Proverbs 15 and one, I believe it is. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger, you know? So there's a time, but there's also a time, you know, if, you, if he's getting on you unnecessarily, you know, man, you just told me this and that and this. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. You know, you might get an apology like that. But generally, how, how you say it, you know, is more important than what you say as well. You know, the scriptures talk about a soft answer. You can say, you know, man, you, you told me something different. If I say, man, I told, you told me something different. I say, you, but you, you told me something different. <laughs> you see? You know, so you, you, have to, you have to use that. Yeah, that's a soft answer. All right, verse three now. It says, the, foolish, the foolishness of man perverteth his way and his heart fretteth against Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right, another one you can line up with that is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 9. You know, the heart is desperately wicked and deceit. Let, let me find it for a bit. I'm about to pull up. Pull up, Ark. That squeaky, squeaky there. All right. So back in this. Jeremiah 17 and 9. So the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay, so who can who can decipher man's heart? In this flesh, we're always going to have them wicked thoughts. You know, them con thoughts that are contrary to the spirit, contrary to spiritual growth. Which is truth is about growth. You can't be stagnant. You know, as sincere babes. Sorry, as babes desiring the sincere milk that they may grow thereby. You know, so we're always trying to grow. Even if you're onto the meat, you know, you're still trying to grow. You don't just get to an adult and stop growing. You know, you go into an older man, an older woman. All right, so the foolishness, the foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the... the of his own lust and enticed okay so it's the foolishness of man right your own lust you're desiring and lust you can lust for something that, that you have if you lust after your own wife that's not wicked you know but if you're being covetous you know and trying to which means trying to desire something that isn't yours or is someone else's which is more specific you know it talks about in the so-called ten commandments 
which is just a part of the law. You know, you're not meant to covet your neighbor's wife, ox, ass, so on and so forth, because they're his. You know, that's his possession. So when it talks about covetous man, if you covet, you know, if you desire or lust after your own wife or your own possession, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, of course. Proverbs 19 and 4. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbour. You know, there's a scripture as well. I can't even think to paraphrase it or what I'd search. Salah here. Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbour. You know, and you see, well, you may necessarily, not necessarily see, but you know, when people get money or if you've come into money, when people win the lottery, you know, you find out, oh shit, this, all, I've got all these best friends. You don't even know them. You've not seen them in <laughs> upwards of 10 years, 15 years. You know, now they're all busting out the woodwork. This guy's coming out the sewer pipe. This guy's hopping out a, a helicopter. You know, they've done it some extravagant means to find you. You know, now you've got many friends. It says, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. You know, and we as a nation, generally, are not materially rich, but we are rich in faith. You know, even Jake in the world has that, that inkling or that desire to know the Lord. You know, a lot of Jakes nowadays you see with a full beard. You ask them, or they'll get asked, are you Muslim or what? You know, he's not Muslim, but it's in him. You know, or they don't eat bloody meat, raw meat. You know? Okay, James 2 and 5. How can my beloved brethren, hath not the most high chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? You know, because they have many friends. It's, it's politics as well. You know, when you get to a certain level of, of um, assets, that's when they start paying off politicians, you know, paying off what can be said in news media outlets. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. And when it talks about in that scripture that it's cons cons um, caused some to err, to be in error of the faith. Because if you, without integrity, going back to the first verse, you do anything, you know, for the right price. Proverbs 19 and 5, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. And that's again in the so-called Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You know, recounting a false a false narrative of events. You know, that is sin. Verse 6. Many will entreat the favour of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. You know, again, if this rich man He's handing out gifts to politicians. You know, of course they're friends. You know, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. Proverbs 19 and verse 7. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, yet they're wanting... Sorry, they are wanting to him, lacking. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Right, and that's not loving your life. Let me find that scripture. Because, you know, there's going to be that one guy. The Bible contradicts. Right, John, uh, John 12 and 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Okay, so when it's loving your life, it's loving your life again in this world. Right, you love the degeneracy, the repro rep reprobatory behavior of this society. You know, you love all this. That's an issue. But it says here, he that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. You know, so you're loving the, the spirit. You know, you're loving the true self. You know, you're not so into the flesh. Galatians 6 and 7. says, Be not deceived, the most high is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth that, shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Right, so again, that's the same thing as loving your life. Loving your life and losing it. 
you know, and hating your life in this world and finding it. So that one, if you're getting wisdom, you're so into the spirit. You know, you're not loving your life in this world. You're looking at something beyond this world. You know, so that's how you would be loving of your soul. Proverbs 19 and 9. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. You know, which is a reiteration of verse 5 there. Verse 10, which shows you how important it is. Verse 10. Delight is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. <laughs> the discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it, is and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. I mean to defer. Let's get that in the NLT. Which you can use any translation. You know, go back to the original languages. But sometimes... The ancient English, you know, or older English, is a bit tricky to understand. So NLT, Proverbs 19 and 11, sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. You know, and it's not to, you know, you don't, you don't pardon sin. But, you know, you don't nitpick every little thing. Or if something's, you know, stirring you up again, a soft answer turneth around. Or even recently, I mentioned, answer a fool according to his own folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And um, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. I think that actually comes first. That would be verse, I think it's Proverbs 25. So it says, discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. It says the king's wrath is as the roaring of a lion, but his favor his favor is as dew upon the grass. A foolish son is a calamity of his father, and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. You know, and that's I'm sure that's a torture technique. The raindrop. I remember watching some Mythbusters thing about that, or it being referenced. You know, a continual raindrop it does your head in. You, know, you hear it dripping on a leaking pipe. Drip. Drip. Oh, it's just a drip. You know, play that hours left. Oh my gosh, this drip is doing my head in, man. That's like a contentious wife. <laughs> man, why are you all why are you all Also, a foolish son is a calamity of his father. You know, it talks about he that... Let me find it. I need to stop doing that. Paraphrasing it and not, not getting anywhere close. So... Syrac Syrac 30 and sorry, one. he that loveth his son causeth him off to feel the rod that he may have joy of him in the end you know so you get the whoopings you have to whoop your son you know make sure he behaves and you know once the chastisement's done and now he understands everything not everything but now understands how to behave for example turn this off now he understands how to behave then you know you can be you can enjoy it you know but first you'd have to be strict you have to enforce that verse 2 he that chastiseth he that chastiseth his son shall have joy, joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy and before his friends shall he rejoice of him though his father die Yet he is though he were not dead, for he hath left one behind him that is like himself. You know, cloning yourself. <laughs> you know, carrying on that legacy there. You know, that was also a big thing in the ancient world, legacy. You know, and, and assuring paternity. You know, because that's where the lineage comes from. You have to imagine how many thousands of years. Imagine there's thousands of years of um, re reproduction across the family tree and then your son comes out like a ninja you know all that gone to waste yeah you know, that's going to piss you off of course so as it reads proverbs 19 and um, 13 a foolish son is a calamity of his father and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping 
house and riches are the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife is from Yahweh. Okay, and that's, that would be a rarity. You know, it says, who can find a virtuous woman? And what did Solomon say? He had a thousand women. What did Solomon say on that topic? If, you're not, if you don't know, look it up, brother. Right, I'm going to call it there. I'm going to call it there. On to the next video, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Kudash. Shalom.